Welcome to the next in the series of Photoshop CS5 for architecture students. We have some trees available in the resource section. Now we're going to open up tree 1. And then we can see an image of a tree I've prepared earlier. Now you can scan images from magazines, uh, you can um, take them from the internet but aside from the copyright issues, um, I do actually like taking photographs of trees in the context where the project is actually situated. It gives a bit more authenticity to the contextual um, messages that the vegetation uh, provides and it means that you don't have any issues in terms of ownership of the images. Now we're going to select um, the tree in a slightly different way now if we go to the application pull down menu under select we're going to make a selection by color range now the background is quite consistent and white so I'm going to sample that white color and go OK and what you'll see is that everything that is whiter in that sort of hue range will be selected so it's picking up all the bits in the middle there but notice that it's actually selecting all of the white and that the tree itself isn't selected. So what we're going to have to do is reverse that selection. So we're actually getting the tree. So if we go to select, we can inverse that selection. And now we've actually got the tree. So I'm going to copy that. Control C or Command C for a Mac. Go back to my presentation and I'm going to paste it in. Control V. I'm going to scale it down through the transform scale, making sure I keep the aspect ratio consistent. Now it is a rather large tree, so I'm not going to make it too small. Now I'm generally happy with the scale and where that tree is, so I'm going to just select the move tool to apply that transformation. You can see there our tree is in a new layer. Now I'm going to rename this and call it tree 1. Okay, so there's our tree 1, but in reality it's it's actually not um, positioned very well because the tree is actually in front of the section, whereas in fact in reality um, it should be behind the section. So I'm just going to turn that tree 1 layer off for a second, and I'm going to go and highlight my section. Now I'm going to zoom in to this area through here. Now I'm going to use my magic wand tool again and I'm going to select the area outside the section. So it's selected all of the area outside my section area. Now what I want to do is actually select inside that section and use it as a mask that I can raise against. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select and I'm going to inverse that selection. So now I've actually got the inside area rather than the outside area. So I'm going to go back, turn on my tree, you can see the selection is still going through there. I'm going to use my eraser tool and making sure that my tree is the active layer, I'm going to go along and just erase in that selection the bits of the tree that are overlapping my building so that my building sits in the front of it there. So there I'm going, taking away the bits of that tree Okay, so my tree is no longer stuck inside my my section. Now I'm actually going to save that selection because I might need that later. So I'm going to go save selection and I'm going to call it section mask. Save that selection. Okay, now I'm going to go control D to turn off that selection. Control minus to zoom out. So there's our, our tree in context. Scale's probably okay, and the context is okay. But 
the tone of the the drawings a little bit over the top so I'm going to knock that back a little bit by knocking back the opacity of the layer up the top right hand side and I'm going to pull the slider down a bit and lighten that image off so it kind of blends in with the sort of general tonality of the drawing makes the line work come up a little bit more and it looks like the trees in the background a little bit so I'm actually reasonably happy with that one I'm going to go control zero to maximize the window okay I'm going to bring another tree into here so I'm going to open up this tree too again this is another palm tree that I've uh, taken a photograph on campus now I haven't actually finished editing the background of this one yet so we're going to quickly do this now So because the difference between the trunk and the green is reasonably distinct I'm going to have a go with the magnetic lasso tool because I'll get a bit more of a tighter and easier grip to that edge of the trunk now it's not perfect but I'm not complaining so I'm going to get the polygon lasso tool I'm going to just take that little bit away from there I'm going to delete that bit Control D and I'm going to keep moving down just trimming along that edge through there now I'm going to use the normal polygon lasso tool to just get the rest of these palm fronds now I'm not going to go crazy trying to get it super accurate really the main thing is is that we want to get it um, approximate uh, profile it's all sort of green and fuzzy anyway the main thing here with the palm tree is to try and preserve I guess the jaggedy edges of the leaves so that it's um, you know it's not a perfect match but when we see that sort of jaggedy leaf we know that it's probably a palm tree so there we go I'm going to delete that section through there close that off going to zoom out there we have I've trimmed off against the trunk and I've done it in small sections zooming up close so now that I've got the bulk of it I can just go around with my erasing eraser and just knock off the rest of that area through there okay I've erased the background around the tree one last thing that I'm going to do just to sort of uh, trim off or, or clean up some of these edges I'm just going to get my dodge tool with the highlights a low exposure and just get rid of some of that furriness around the the back edges and give us a crisper sort of edge to those palm fronds that's enough so you know it's not perfect but it's not so shabby either so I'm going to do the same select by color range pick the white go OK so it's picked everything that's white I'm going to go select uh, inverse that selection now I've got the palm tree I'm going to go copy go back to my presentation paste control V OK a little bit on the big side so edit transform scale I'm going to shift and bring that down a wee bit I'm going to apply that and move it further up through here I'll need to transform that a little bit more I think so I'll scale it from the bottom through here move it see what it's kind of like in context um, I might bring this one a bit further up so that it's kind of looks like it's in front of that other tree so there we go I'm going to put that through there I'm going to 
hit my move tool to apply that change. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up that selection that I had made previously. So I'm going to go load selection, I'm going to get the section mask, go OK. There we've got our section mask again. We've got our layer 2 which is our new palm tree. I'm going to go through again just to erase that off a little bit more. Control D to turn it off. It's not brilliant. Some of the, the palm fronds have, you know, they're, they're a bit sort of on the white side. We could fix that up um, in the host, but actually I don't quite mind it like that. We can adjust the opacity, but having the, the two different opacities kind of gives gives it a bit of depth. Okay, so that's not so bad. Gives it some scale and gives it some context. So the one thing to note here is that we're starting to get quite a lot of layers going on here and as we start to get more and more elements through here it's going to keep this layer palette's going to get a little bit crowded. Now we can start to organize these a little bit more. Now if you look at the bottom of that layer panel we've got a few options here. Now I'm going to create a group or make a folder in the layer panel. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to name this one group. I'm going to call these trees. I'm going to drag the trees, tree 1 and tree 2, into the tree palette. So I'm going to change that order. Actually I quite like having the tree tree 2 underneath the tree 1. It seems to fix up a lot of that that flaring issue. So that's quite good. So we can then collapse that like a folder. Same thing we can go ahead make another group. Let's call this group people and let's drag the people into that. Close it off. We could do the same with the section. Call this group section and let's drag it in order underneath the trees and then we can pull all of those section elements associated with that. I can turn that off. You can see that it allows us to very quickly go to the main elements of the in the layer panel and when we need to actually modify them we can then uh, open up or collapse um, the folder. So it makes managing uh, layers a lot easier as we start to get more and more layers um, on board. So that's the end of this section. Hopefully um, we get a bit more of appreciation of how the layers work and how to bring in um, different vegetation and some tricks in um, selecting and manipulating and creating your own entourage library. We'll see you for the next video where we're going to start um, putting some light and shade into our section. So we'll see you then.